Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be working to get the pony motor on this 830 industrial behind me um, fired up and running for the first time. Um, or at least that's the plan. Now if you're new to the channel or you haven't seen this uh, tractor yet, this is my 1959 John Deere 830 industrial and we got it running recently after pulling it out of a field where it had sat for about 20 years. Um, I'll put links to those videos down below but I haven't heard the pony motor on this run yet. Okay, it's getting dark, but this is a two-person job, and so I have my daughter out here. She's gonna drive the 830 while I pull her with the 3020. actually not too bad in there. I mean, it's dusty and dirty, but not too bad. Most dust. For the life of me, I cannot figure out how to get this flange off that uh, air inlet. It seems like it should just be kind of like a press. It seems like it should just be like a press fit sleeve that goes on there, but I've tried tapping on it and I don't want to break it so I'm gonna try to just lift the hood up and uh, I don't know we'll see what happens yeah. okay. no that's loose it'll come with the hood Here's the hood, as you can see, got some broken supports on there that we can fix. You can see it's been painted at least, probably just once, at least once. But that's the original yellow, like I talked about on my last video. It's basically the exact same color as a DeWalt drill. Okay, now, here is the pony motor. So I've just spent the last couple of minutes just kind of looking at this thing, familiarizing myself with it. And one thing I noticed right off the bat is, if you look right here, um, let me get my light there. If you look right here, there's a serial tag on this pony motor, which my other pony motor did not have. So that confirms that this is a later style pony motor. And the number there, SE15647. I'm going to try to take this cover off and see if I can get down into the flywheel. I know the clutch is in here, but I don't know if I'll be able to get to the flywheel. And I'd like to just see. So let's see if I can turn the pony motor. Oh, yeah, that turns. Not stuck at all. I actually have never even checked the oil in this pony motor either. So let's do that. Hopefully something's on the dipstick. Very, very empty. Nothing is really on there. See, if I clean it off. Oh, 
it barely touches some oil. So there is something in there. Not very much. Let's put some oil in there. I just poured about a cup of oil into this. And now, if you can see, it's registering right about there on the F. So it's full now. Okay, one thing that we need to do, oops, one thing that we need to do real quick is change out the starter button on this little engine. Ever since I first saw this tractor, the starter button has always been stuck. And so I just took a hammer and tapped it in thinking maybe it would break loose and pop back out, but it didn't. I mean, it did break loose, but so that's shot. I bought another one right here, if you can see. So let's take this little uh, instrument panel off and let's change out that starter button so that then um, at least that's working. Okay. Let's see what's behind this. Okay. A little bit of a rat's nest. is the switch we want. Well, that took entirely too long, but I got that new starter button installed. Um, so before I get too far into this, I'm gonna work on the fuel tank. You can see up under here, there's this little, little bitty fuel tank. You can't really tell how, you know, looking from the top, it looks like it would be, you know, a big fuel tank, but no, it's just, little pancake fuel tank about the size of, I don't know, it's probably a quart. But uh, anyway, since it's all rusty inside, I'm going to remove this. I already disconnected it here from the carburetor. And uh, we'll pull that fuel tank out. You can see that in there. Just black as black can be. Well, here's the fuel shutoff valve from the bottom of that little gasoline fuel tank, and you can just see down in there, it's just chock full of this old tarry gas. So I'm glad I pulled that off. That's just a mess. Okay, we're looking down on top of the carburetor right now. I'm going to take off this cover and look inside the float bowl and see how that is. I cleaned off the top, so hopefully dirt doesn't fall down in there. But judging by how gunky the gas tank was and by how gunky that fuel shut off valve on the bottom of the gas tank was, that sediment bowl, I'm guessing that this is going to be very dirty inside. It looks like, it must be an optical illusion, but it looks like this is cross-threaded in there. I gotta pull it straight up because there's that wheel. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's great. Look at this. Can you see down inside there? Hold on a second. Look down inside of there. I mean, that's pretty clean. That's pretty good. See what I mean? Doesn't that look like it's in there crooked? Must be an optical illusion. Please be an optical illusion. Okay. Guys, I think I might just spray this carburetor out with some carb cleaner. I don't think I'm going to disassemble it anymore right now. I want to see if this thing starts and runs.
So this is good news. So I'm going to spray some carb cleaner down inside of this little jet right here. And you'll notice that carb cleaner does come out the bottom. Jet. See? I'm going to take off the top of the carburetor or the air inlet. I just want to look down the throat of the carburetor and see, make sure there's not any gunk or anything down there that's going to get sucked into the into the uh, engine. That's really clean down inside there. That is good news. I'm really happy about that. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this back on and connect the uh, air breather um, to the top of the carburetor. I just dropped, this is the oil bath uh, air breather off of the pony engine. And I'm glad I dropped that down. This is pretty dirty in here. So I'm going to go clean that out, put some fresh oil in it, and then uh, that'll be done. Okay, I got this filled full of clean oil. Now let's stick this up in place without getting dirt up in it. There we go. Okay. That should have clean air now. That's cracked. Oh, shoot. Well, I hope we're not dead in the water here. Um, I haven't checked for spark or anything, but looking here closely, there is this, uh, you know, casing that goes around the coil here, and that's cracked. The crack goes all the way up along the side here. This is where the spark plug wire comes out go to one of them. This is where it comes out to go to the other one on the back side of the engine. This looks like it's been repaired with like, oh, that's just caulk. So like silicone caulk. Maybe it'll work. Um, but I probably will want to get a new, uh, new coils and probably a, a tune-up kit here. But let's not give up yet. Let's check my points cap here and geez let's see if we've got spark that'd be nice well shoot guys i am dead in the water i there's two problems i'll show it i'll show them both to you first of all as soon as i opened up this distributor and saw these coils and how this one has got silicone all over it and that one's cracked. I was a little bit worried. And so if I hook up, this is just a battery, six volt battery hooked up to the, um, hooked up directly to the distributor. And on this side, if I open up this, let's see. You guys are going to be able to see this right here. Listen and watch for the spark. You should be able to see it. So that side's got spark. This side has got nothing. What is wrong with it? And I've tuned up these points a couple of times now. The points are clean. I think it's got to be something with that coil. So I'm not going to try to start it if these two cylinders aren't going to run. The other problem, let me show you this. So here's the second problem. So I've got the battery connected. However,
when I try to turn the engine over. Nothing happens. I turn that on, no light goes on. So, anyway, um, and when I, let's see, let's go check here. And I was worried that it might just be that the cables were bad and I'm getting a bad ground, and that's why it's not turning over or anything. But if I touch, so here I am at the starter. Hold on, I'm gonna switch sides. See. So I've got six volts here at the starter, or at the starter solenoid. It's just something goofy is going on with the wiring. Sorry, I'm moving my peripherals around. So I've got 6.3 volts here, and that's actually about the same as what I have back at the battery. So it's not like the cables are old and crusty and drawing a bunch of resistance. So. That's discouraging. I've got an electrical problem up with my wiring and also over with my distributor. I've got to uh, put a tune-up kit in that. So it's a no-go for today. Well, it's been a week for me, but it's only been a couple of seconds for you guys. I'm back and I have a new distributor to put on this pony engine. Now, I could have just bought new coils but then I probably would have also wanted to buy new points and condensers while I was at it. And so when I added all of that up, oh, it came up to like 250 bucks for the two new coils. They were like 80 bucks a piece, whatever uh, points are, and then condensers a couple bucks. Anyway, so it adds up to about, like I said, about 250 bucks. For about 370 bucks is what this brand new distributor costs. So it's $120 more. And the only reason that I bought this new distributor is because at home, I have that spare pony motor that does not have a distributor. So if I ever want to get that pony motor going, then I need to buy a new distributor at that point. And I don't want to go and spend $400 or $370 on a brand new distributor for that uh, parts pony motor. So I figured this way, I pick up a spare distributor to put on that uh, parts pony motor if I ever want to get that going. At least, at least I have a distributor to make that complete. So that's kind of why I went this route. Otherwise, I would have just bought uh, two coils and points and condensers for this right here. So I'm going to get this switched over real quick, and um, we'll keep moving. down inside the distributor I did gap the points to 20 thousandths so those are both good and then I went ahead and I hooked up the uh, the power cable power in to the distributor right there you'll notice I didn't put the new distributor cover back onto this um, it was just a little too bright and I didn't want that glaring out and also I like that this one the original one still has the Wyco Electric Company uh, serial tag on it. So the new one up here, see it's just generic. While I've got it down this far and I'm doing a new distributor and new plug wires, I might as well do new plugs too. So here's the plugs that I pulled out of these back two cylinders. As you can see, they're not too bad. I mean, they're a little bit plugged with carbon, but at least there's no rust and no, you know, obvious signs of damage to the actual uh, electrode and things itself. The plugs that were in it were a Champion UJ12, and the plugs that I'm putting back into it are an Autolite uh, 216, if you can see that. I just took a minute and I've got the fuel system all hooked back up for the pony motor. You can see there, you can see here, this is this combination valve 
and sediment bowl for the for the uh, little pony motor. And this is one of the most intricate filters I've ever seen. It has, I'll put a picture of it up, but down here on the float, excuse me, in the sediment bowl, the screen is actually like a laminated stack of um, like little super fine shims. And that filters the fuel that's going through there. So it's really a pretty interesting unit. And then up here, you can see I cleaned out this fuel tank. It was full of, it wasn't actually very rusty. It was just very full of that um, kind of tar-like substance varnish from the, uh, from the old fuel that sat in this and evaporated away and just, anyway. So that was a huge mess, but some soaking with some mineral spirits um, took care of that. So down here, this is this mess of wires that I was talking about. We should have power coming into, well, I'm gonna have to go look at my diagram over there, but there's a lot of stuff that right here that's, that's not absolutely correct. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna remove some of this um, electrical tape that's crystallized and we're gonna clean this up and get this right. Okay, I went ahead and I cut out all of the old wiring that was that was already in here because I thought it was a little bit suspect and I didn't trust it. And I've just rewired everything following the wiring diagram from the John Deere manual. And I've put it in place here, just connecting the starter switch right here. I disconnected everything for the ammeter. Whoops for the ammeter and for the fuel gauge and the fuel starting switch and all the lights. Dis disconnected all of that. And now we're just gonna be running power into the distributor through the switch. And hopefully, hopefully this works. Okay, let's see, I've got the battery connected. And let's flip this and see if the oil pressure light comes on. Yes. Let's shut it off. Oh, now let's see. I'm man. I'm sorry, guys. I'm really nervous. Let's turn my fuel on. Let's turn this back on. Let's try to start it. Okay, here we go. Oops. Sorry. I'm going to do too many things here. Tried to start. Okay, it started that first time. I'm gonna go hook up the battery and I'm gonna try again. Hopefully this time we can get the, uh, the starter to engage with the, uh, with the flywheel.
point two. Well, it's good and bad. Okay, the problem is this gear right here that turns over the big engine is always spinning. And I don't think that it should be. I think it should only be spinning when I pull back on the, the lever to engage the starter. So that's why every time I get the, I get the pony motor running, every time I, uh, I pull back on the compression release and then I pull back on the starter, since this gear is spinning at whatever, however many RPMs the transmission output spins on this, then you're throwing this gear that's moving 100 miles an hour into this stationary flywheel. So that's the issue. And that is a problem that I'm gonna have to fix another day. I hate to end this way, guys, but we did get the pony motor started. It seems to run good. It blows a ton of smoke. However, I did put in about 50% uh, two-stroke uh, gas just because I was worried about the uh, I was worried about lubrication and stuff in the top end. Probably wouldn't have needed to do that. So that doesn't help the smoking problem as well. Then the needle and seat, I think, in that carburetor sticks a little bit. And so um, if I leave the fuel on, then it starts dumping excess fuel inside of the carburetor. And then we start getting lots of uh, uh, lots of smoke. But I am happy with how it runs. I got to go through that transmission on the starting engine to make sure that uh, that everything is as it should be, you know. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, as always, please comment, like, subscribe. Um, it doesn't really cost you anything to do that, but it does help the channel grow. And I, uh, I can always use more motivation to get this, this thing and all of the other projects I've got running. Hey, thanks so much. We'll see you.